Welcome back to America's Forum right here on Newsmax TV. I'm John Bachman. And I'm former Congressman J.D. Hayworth. Johnny B., something I know about, raising money for campaigns, big donors already adding to the war chests of super PACs in this year's election cycle. New political finance reports show that a variety of organizations gave sizable donations to super PACs. The donations following the Supreme Court's Citizens United ruling in 2010 that the government may not ban political spending by corporations in elections, a First Amendment right to free speech. But there are some who claim that these donations could be a blow to the integrity of our elections. For example, a Sen Senator Bernie Sanders, the independent of Vermont, took to the Senate floor saying they're creating an oligarchic form of society. Well, joining us right now to discuss this is Josh Orton, a senior advisor at Progressive, Progressives United. Thanks for joining us, Josh. Thanks for having me. Josh, we're glad to have you along. And of course, Progressives, you, you can help me with this. I believe Progressives United, uh, founded by, by former Senator Ross Feingold, who worked with John McCain on McCain-Feingold uh, campaign finance reform. And true to form, what happens anytime a new law is passed, uh, lawyers, accountants, and others take a look and they say, hmm, where are the loopholes here? And then you had that decision made by the Supreme Court in the case of Citizens United. Give us your take on the state of campaign financing now here as we head into the midterms in 2014. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Russ was the co-author of McCain-Feingold um, back in the 2000s, and it solved uh, a fundamental problem, which was that the uh, corruption or the appearance of corruption from soft money being written unlimited in unlimited amounts directly to the parties. You literally had uh, members of Congress and senators um, deciding on votes depending on which corporation had given their party a six-figure check. McCain, now, uh, Josh, that would be quid pro quo. That would be illegal. If that were the case, why didn't the Justice Department, which elevated political corruption even in the post-9-11 era to one of its top three concerns, why wasn't a case brought for the very charge you're making? Well, of course, as you know, proving a quid pro quo specifically is very difficult. We're beyond the era of uh, a suitcase full of money, although I hear it's still popular in California. What corruption looks like or the appearance of corruption looks like is large entities like the political parties soliciting and receiving gigantic checks. Now, McCain-Feingold did ban soft money, and we actually thought that the campaign finance system was in pretty good shape in the 06 and the 08 elections. Now, you're right. Lawyers and operatives are looking for loopholes, and in fact, uh, we, we blame Terry McAuliffe uh, from the Democratic Party in part for creating um, this, this, this notion of soft money in the first place. So, of course, people were looking for loopholes, and what you saw is um, outside means to corruption. If, if McCain-Feingold closed the door to sort of an inside track on, on, on corruption through large contributions, what Citizens United did was create a completely parallel outside track where these gigantic uh, contributions could still affect elections. Uh, elected officials and candidates knew who was giving. And, you know, I guess I want to sort of back up because too often people look at the effect on the, ne the next election or the previous election, how it's going to affect Democrats, how it's going to affect Republicans. I think the, the, the more important thing is how it's going to affect policy long term. Once elected officials and candidates start depending on these types of unlimited corporate contributions cycle after cycle, they're going to start changing and sort of hewing their their agenda, their voting agenda, or their, their or their campaign towards those co contributors. Now, you're right that doesn't that isn't quid pro quo, but that's still corruption. So, Josh, the long term effect you're talking about here, what's a bigger concern for you? The amount of money that's being used in these campaigns, or is it the lack of transparency? Well, I think it's both things, and I think you're right. The transparency is a big deal. If you guys ever watched The Sopranos, you know Tony Soprano didn't own the pork store for the sandwiches, right? He was using it as a front for more nefarious activities. So I think you're absolutely right. Um, C4s and, and super PACs need to disclose all the money that they're using for, for political activities and disclose it on a, on a regular basis so that people can actually find the information. And if that were but happening, would you, have, would you have a pro still have a problem with the amount of money that's being used in these campaigns? Well, I think it would be a, a, a good first step, but I do still think that there's still avenues for corruption even with transparency. Well, now, again, I, I just, uh, having a history in Congress and, and having the C word bandied about as, as, a, as a political tool, and let's face it, both parties use it, uh, and, and it happens oft times when there is no evidence or even the, quote, appearance of corruption. Josh, I, I don't want to refight all battles, uh, but I am interested with McCain-Feingold, especially, what, what made me somewhat leery 
was the fact that once Senate Democrats said, oh, we're not going to touch the unions, and if you bring up anything about the unions, that is, quote, a poison pill, and Senator McCain decided that, no, he wouldn't bring up anything about the unions. I'm interested, from your perspective, can you defend the, the lack of transparency for the Committee on Political Education of the AFL-CIO, which never is figured in the aggregate in terms of spending or manpower or in-kind donations through COPE to a, a majority of Democratic candidates as opposed to union backing for Republican candidates. Why should unions have been kept out of McCain-Feingold? Well, Congressman, I think you're right. This is not just a problem that's exclusive to Republicans and to right-leaning groups. You know, when we saw the ban on corporate contributions way back in the early uh, 1900s, you know, we saw 20 years later that amended to include union money and union contributions and union spending on elections. Uh, so I think you're right. There, the, you know, whatever reform happens and however we're treating gigantic contributions, look, some of the some of my friends on the left won't be happy with this, but I agree that there there has to be uni uh, uniformity across the political spectrum. Because, like I said, uh, this isn't just a partisan problem. This isn't just Republicans. Now, I think Republicans are playing in the major leagues here when it comes to corporate contributions and unlimited money. Democrats are, are still are still playing in the minors, maybe double A ball, but it's a, oh, Josh, they're, still, but Josh, they're the, still playing the same game. You know, I know it's not exactly apples to apples, but the Senate, uh, the Democratic Senate candidates are outpacing Republicans in, in those races over there. I mean, it's not. You know, there's obviously some differences there, but it's not like the Democrats aren't playing the same game here, especially when you look at 2012. They raised just as much as the Republicans well, did are you, overall. Are you talking about the Senate candidates, Dem Dem Democratic Sen Senate candidates are outpacing Republicans with hard money? With spend, yes, with hard money. Well, yeah, no, I think I think hard money is, a, is, is certainly a better indicator uh, to where the, the where donors are and where, where the political wind is shifting. Look, hard money can come from individual grassroots contributors, five, ten, fifty dollars $50. We don't have a problem with that. Well, here's, here's some, I tell you what, let's, let's make some history, Josh. Uh, you talk about actually including unions, and I mentioned the Committee on Political Education. I think progressives and conservatives might be able to unite for widespread transparency. And I'll give you a loophole that ought to be eliminated. For example, when I challenged uh, John McCain in 2010, he was able to take advantage of the money left in that presidential reserve account. Perhaps one meaningful amendment would be to restrict use of reserve monies left in a presidential account to be used in, a, in another federal race, like a race for the United States Senate. Because when you're talking money, I'm not crying about it, it's just a fact. I was outspent 10 to 1 with a lot of that money provided by taxpayer matches for the 2008 presidential election. Well, yeah, I think that uh, it's something to look at. But going back to an earlier point about disclosure, the most important thing when we're talking about sort of these transfer of funds between uh, different accounts is making sure that there's some uni uniform uh, standard of disclosure. So you're not taking money that, w that had a lower standard of disclosure and dumping it into an account that has a higher standard of disclosure because in the end, you want voters to know where the money's coming from. Well, Josh Orton, we thank you for letting us know where you stand. We look forward to our next visit with you at Progressives United there in Madison, Wisconsin. Thanks for Skyping in with us today. Thanks so much. Take care, Josh. Okay, we come right back. We'll have much more. Stay with us. We'll have more on the search for that missing Malaysian jetliner with over 200 passengers on board. Any update after those new things have been spotted in satellite imagery? And you can reach out to us on social media. Find our contact info right here on the screen at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. Find us on Twitter.